With the instructions in this video, in a few hours' time, professional results like this can be easily achieved. The first thing with any, any paint job is a thorough, thorough cleaning of the whole car. Now, you can use a good, strong detergent, something like Spick and Span is perfectly all right here. We're going to get all the road grime, edges, corners, really, really try hard to get it as clean as you can. The paint job's only as good as its preparation, and this is the first step to good preparation. A half hour time spent here is time well spent. Also, a good cleaning lets you see all the little dents, nicks, and chips that will be taken care of prior to painting the car. Next, we take a, a, normally just a screwdriver, but whatever tool is needed to remove all the miscellaneous antennas, door handles, door locks, anything that comes off easily is going to make it easier to paint around rather than masking off. Try to return all the little screws and things as you go. Make it a lot easier when the time comes to, to put it back together. But here again, this part of the antenna comes off. It's easier to clean underneath and you don't have to mask around it then. In this case, you can see how it would be difficult to mask off or paint around the windshield wiper, so we're going to take them off as we go too. I'm going to put, this, put the bolt back on here just so later on I don't have to look and try to figure out where, where it came from. I'm going to just wrap a little tape around there to keep, the, to keep the paint off and to help save the bolt so we don't lose it. Try to mark everything as you go. Yeah. It just makes it a lot easier when you go to put it back together. Mark left hand, right hand, whatever it is. You think you'll remember, but a week, a week may pass from the time you take it apart to the time you put it together, so just to help yourself. And you can see it here just what this is, wood grain and stripe remover. We're going to be taking off decals and pinstripes before we paint the car. Here we've just got a home uh, woman's hair dryer and a razor knife. A little bit of heat helps on all, all these kinds of decals and pinstriping. You can see how it just peels right off. After you've taken the, the tape itself off, there is some adhesive still underneath where the tape was, and here we're using just that, wood grain and stripe adhesive remover. Spray it on the same way, and that will loosen up the adhesive underneath the sticky stuff, because you don't want to paint over that. Shake up the can well, spray it on according to the directions. Leave it set for just a moment or two. Take your plastic spreader and scrape off the adhesive. You can see how that cleans that up. After we've painted the car, we're going to be putting on a, a different selection of stripes. Paint job's only as good as its preparation. We're going to show you how to prepare it really well. I'm going to show you di various examples now of moldings and trim to take off. In this case, obviously a Honda Civic. A putty knife works works well to get under the edges of these moldings and pieces of trim. And in this case, uh, we go under it slowly. We find out that it's just it's just glued on. Some are bolted from the back. Some have other clip arrangements. Normally the putty knife underneath there, lifting a corner, will tell you how it is attached. There's wheel opening molding, sometimes there's, there's screws in them, sometimes bolts. Same thing, just kind of peel back an edge a little bit with the putty knife. You'll, you'll get a look, ah, it's glued on, two-face tape. So we take all that off. Here's another real typical side molding, aftermarket side molding. We'll be showing you how to put those on other cars later on, too. Peel out the black insert. You'll see that it, it's riveted to the door. And we take an eighth-inch drill, drill bit, drill out the rivets. You'll just get so much better of a paint job by removing all of these things. You can see the last guy who painted it painted around it. 
Here's various moldings we've pulled off cars to show you. That's got uh, Phillips head screws on the back to hold that on. That's glued on. That's got nuts screwed on. And another glued on molding. Here's our plastic emblem adhesive that we're going to use later on to reattach these pieces. And here's two face tape and a wrench. So you're going to need to, to put all these things back on with. Here's one more other kind of molding, trim piece. That just presses in. But there again, your putty knife will help you to determine how they come off. Here, take out the Phillip head screws and lift off the side light. Now we're going to take a piece of sandpaper, 100 in this case, and just go around and scuff up all the door dings, supermarket carts, scratches, that kind of thing. It really detracts from a, from a good paint job. And just take care of all of those little imperfections. With the car clean, you'll be able to see them. And after you've painted it, if you haven't fixed them, you'll really see them. So take just a little bit of time here and now, and just dividends will be well, well worth the time spent, I promise. Just 100 paper, just kind of scuffing up the area. And get down in them a little bit if you can. There, now you can see we've, we've sanded it down lightly and they become apparent real quickly, dings and scratches. This is what we're going to use to fill in all those dents and dings and scratches that we were talking about. It's a two-part glazing putty. Here it is out of the can. There's various brands. Just ask at your local auto parts store, whatever brand they happen to carry. It'll work just fine. It's hard to say how much to use. Put some out there. This, this is the hardener of the catalyst. Put a little bit with it. You can see it just it doesn't take much. If you put too much, all it means is it's going to get too hard, too fast on you. And you have to scrape it off and mix it up a little more. Just mix it well. When it's a one consistent color, then you know that it's, it is well mixed. We're going to take our little plastic applicator that we bought at the same time and just go along and overfill each one of these little nicks and scratches a little bit. Really makes a difference on the final paint job when you've taken care of all these. Otherwise, they just, they just stand out so much. Here, we're purposely overfilling them all. Now we're just cleaning up a little bit with some paper towels get that edge nice and clean so we can reuse it the next time. Here we're going we're to start with our little vibrating sander, normally used for wood, but uh, they only, they're an inexpensive tool. If you're going to be doing much body and fender work, they're nice to have. You can do this by hand. This is 180 sandpaper we're using, fine sandpaper. We did wait till it dried well. You see how it's going to sand off everything that's, that's above the nick or the scratch, and it'll only leave the filler in the scratch or the nick. It goes real quickly. You can do a whole door in you know, certainly a half hour, hour maximum. If it is